Hi, this is Jason Chonko, Applications at Siglent Technologies North America. In today's video, we're going to take a quick look at the SNA5000A Vector Network Analyzer User Interface. In order to make this a little bit easier, what I've decided to do is to use the web control for this particular instrument. So I've connected the instrument to a local area network and I've uh, found the IP address which you can see up here and once you type that in make a connection through your web browser you'll see the welcome window come up and we're going to go to instrument control and now uh, what I'm going to show you is directly applicable to what you would see on the front panel. It's just a little bit easier to view here, uh, a little bit more clear because the the camera is much better this way, or the uh, the images. So, just like to go through some of the icons and some of the user interface things that make this uh, quite an easy instrument to use and quite flexible. So let's start along the top line. Uh, again, this is the display as we would normally view it on the instrument itself. We're just viewing it on our web browser, so directly in control of the instrument, just like we would if we were in front of it. Everywhere that I click with a mouse is also going to be the same type of action that you can perform with your finger. So um, we've got redo and undo uh, here in the upper left hand corners. We've got add trace. So this is the preset window that we would come up with in factory defaults. And you'll note, um, so we've got S11, trace one, and down here you'll see channel one. So we've got a few different items to, to keep track of. Uh, the trace is the measurement trace. So if we wanted to add a measurement trace to this channel, we would just simply press that and now you'll notice that we have trace 2. Uh, if we want to we can press and hold and we'll get the ability to change the measurement type. We can check select S1, S12, S22, S21, balanced receiver wave. We can also hold and view some other options. We've got different formats available log mag, lin mag. If we select one of these in the current window, we would overlay the two. So you'll see now we've got a Smith chart overlaid uh, with the S11 measurements for uh, log magnitude. If we want to have that in a different window, we can hold and drag. And now we can go to the right, to the left, to, or I'm sorry, to the top, to the left, to the bottom. Uh, and let's just move it over to the right. And now you'll see we have two windows. They are still both channel one and you'll see that located in the lower left hand corner here channel 1 and channel 1 and that means they're using the same span from start to stop and they're also using the same setting so if we wanted to we could add a marker and now you'll notice that when we move marker 1 it moves on both instrument or both channel windows um, or both the channel windows for that single channel now we can add another channel and this is completely independent. Here we've got channel two, you can see that denoted here, and we can then adjust channel two independently of channel one. Uh, so channel one, we've got two windows, channel two, we've got one window. And again, we can add a trace to that particular window as well. So again, these are separate. If we wanted to change the frequency settings for this particular channel, what we could do is go up here click on this and we can go to system. Now this is going to give us access in the web control. This is going to give us access to all of the soft keys that would be available to us from the front panel as, as hard keys. And by going into the utility, again, we can see uh, we've got various items available, but let's go to hard keys. And this is going to give us all of the front panel keys in a remote setting. So again, I'm on channel two window. I'm just going to change the stop frequency. And now we're at 5 gig, and you'll see that only channel 2, right? These are still at 8.5 gig stops. This is now at uh, 5 gigahertz. So that's a way that we can uh, open up different windows and have different channels and different measurements taking place in different places. Uh, so quite useful. Again, we can add a uh, marker here, and you'll see that it only affects the channel that we have ex we've ac accept accepted for that specific channel marker. Um, we can also trash it if we want to. And so we can delete individual settings, we can delete individual windows just by uh, clicking. And if we want to redo that, we can go back and um, put that together. We can save up to 10 undo and redo steps. Uh, we can also save. So we can save data and we can select the file type and the trace type. Uh, we also have the ability to do uh, file searching and we can also capture screenshots. So if we press the camera icon, you'll see, and we can also save 
the smaller images if we would like, and we can preview those so we can actually take a look at what the image is prior to saving it. Um, some of the other features that we have on the user interface, again with the hard keys we have the ability to adjust quite a bit uh, for each individual setup, but we can also do more in each setting if we want to. We can, let's add another trace to this particular channel window and move it down. by grabbing on there. And you'll notice that if we change, I'm gonna change S21 measurement type and make this a little bit more obvious. We're gonna change the measurement type to S22. And we'll do, um, instead of log magnitude, let's change it to linear, let's do phase. And now you'll note that when we are active on channel, when we're active for that particular trace measurement type, the units are going to change. So if we click back over here to channel one, you'll see that we now change the scale. So that's important to understand if we're overlaying multiple traces with different measurement types in the same channel window, the type of graph or the type of units that we see on the side is going to be directly associated with the channel that we have selected. So we can overlay a lot of things, but in order to be clear, you know, we, we can get a lot of information on one display, but you know, you still have some limitations um, about how that information is displayed. So just wanted to highlight that as a particular setup. Uh, when you're uh, when you're down on the bottom along the, this line, you can also change some things. Um, we can select the type of trace. We can add and delete here along the bottom. We can check the channel type and add channels. Uh, we can take a look at triggering and change that from manual, external, or bus. We can change the continuous measurement to single or hold. We can change the bandwidth or the intermediate frequency bandwidth. And so we can select from those values as well. We can also check and see what type of corrections or calibration we're using for that particular setup. We can disable the RF on, and we can see the type of reference that we're using. We can also freeze the display. I'd like to thank you for watching today's video. If you have any additional questions, please contact your local Siglent office and have a great day.